Hi everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. Of course, every time a new application comes out, I get very excited, or when there's a really cool update. And so right now, I or recently I went into the Mac App Store and noticed that Hype by Tumult released a brand new update. And I get so excited when Hype does that because it is my favorite application for the Mac. If you're not familiar with it, Hype by Tamal is an HTML5 editor that allows you to set up really cool animations. I mean, pretty awesome. And most of it can be done without any coding. Let me take you to Hype's website. You'll see here that they're now offering two versions. You can download Hype 3 or upgrade to Hype 3. And you can download or upgrade to Hype Professional. Hype Professional is what I'm going to focus on today, mainly because it comes with some pretty cool features that you're really going to enjoy. Okay, so here's a project that I set up for Hype, and this is just for demo purposes. I recently worked on some collages for Instagram using uh, fashion models, and I was just playing around with uh, digital photography and photo editing applications. And so this is what is being featured in each scene. But you'll notice that I presented them very differently because I'm playing around with these, this new feature called layouts. And you'll see that in the top left corner here is an icon for layouts. And this is something new. If you used Hype before, you know that scenes were something that normally appeared along the top. And scenes are basically like pages where, that you can navigate to as you're setting up your site. Well, now they appear vert vertically. And alongside those scenes, you also have layouts. And layouts correspond with the different devices and platforms that you want your project to appear in, if you want to go that route. So for example, if you, you click on the plus symbol for layouts, you'll see that you have the option to create an iPhone version, iPad vertical, iPad horizontal, and desktop. And that's what I did for each scene. So this is my intro scene here. If, you, if I go through my layouts, you see I have one for the iPhone, one for the iPad vertical, one for the iPad horizontal, and one for the desktop. So if you would have viewed this in a browser, you'd see that I'm going to swipe up. I have touch events here. So I'm going to swipe up, and you can see I've adjusted my layout to coincide with how it would appear on the desktop. Now you'll notice, too, on the left-hand side, I have another animation with some buttons where I used another feature uh, called symbols, where you can take your animations and encase them inside a symbol. This enables you actually to duplicate that content in other areas of your project fairly easily. And I'm going to show you briefly how that's done. So for example, with this setup, I'm just giving the user an option to navigate to the project without having to rely exclusively on the vertical swiping gestures that I have built in. And what's also nice too is with the responsive layouts, you can actually see how they reformat it. So you notice I showed you the four different kinds. Now if I drag this window over, you'll see it start to change. iPad, iPad again, and iPhone. So you're setting your project up to coincide with these various different changes in formats. And that's the benefit of having the responsive layout option. Pretty cool, huh? I'm loving it. So let me walk you through the features of how I did all this. Let's start with the first page. So with the first page, you can see here, I chose the iPhone version. And I basically chose to lay it out how I would want people to view it if they came upon this site using an iPhone. So I decided to center the text. With the iPad vertical, I actually decided to move the text and the elements a little higher to the top because I felt that would be better for an iPad version. But again, you know, what's nice about this is giving me the flexibility to do this. You know, if you were to use an actual responsive template for a website, you wouldn't really have this flexibility unless you were a dynamic coder and you can do all that yourself. I mean, you would pretty much be stuck with what the outcome was. Here, you can make decisions along the way. So this is the iPad horizontal version where I decided to center the information. You know, I could decide to move it up if I want. If I think that's a little better for the iPad version and the desktop version, which again, I can make that decision here as well. Maybe for the desktop, I want it to be a little further up, but that's the flexibility that you have. You can make these decisions. You can decide to enlarge the font or make it smaller. You, you can reposition them however you want. Um, you may want to keep in mind uh, or maintain some kind of consistency if you want there to be some kind of organic flow to the design, but 
it's just great having this kind of customization. And I went through and did this for every scene. So I just have four scenes set up here. And here's the second scene. And as you can see, I laid everything out differently. For the iPhone, more vertical. For the iPad, vertical, same thing. Uh, but for the horizontal iPad, I decided to actually crop the image and enlarge the font. And, and likewise with the desktop version. But I brought the, the text up just a tad. So I, I, I took some liberties with the other pages in terms of how I presented the imagery relative to the text. And likewise, with the third scene, I did the exact same thing. As I went to the larger sizes, I began to crop my images. And this is just decisions I made along the way. And likewise, with the fourth scene. OK, so now let me share with you the new option, which is the, the symbol option. With symbols, you can create new symbol or new persistent symbol. With a symbol, you can basically encase uh, your animations into one symbol. So all of your elements and, and the animations associated with them can now become contained in one symbol, and you can duplicate them in other ways. It saves you a lot of time that way. If you use persistent symbol, you can actually carry those symbols through your entire project. Every update you make to each symbol will then be carried through to the other symbols. So this is great in terms of saving time, number one, and just improving your overall workflow, to tell you the truth. So what I did was here in the last scene here, uh, this is the desktop version, is I created a little animation for three elements that you see coming in from the top left. And as you can see, when I select those three elements, you see they're, they're contained in one symbol because that what I did was I selected those three and then chose convert to symbol and then encased them in that one symbol so now I can actually easily transfer these three elements with the animations included to other areas of my project so for example if I copy this and then move up to the next platform which is for the iPad horizontal paste that in and I can just add those same animations right into this page. And likewise, with the vertical iPad version, and, and even with the iPhone, iPhone version, which I actually already did because I had to rotate the images. I wanted to save some time. And I just moved those down to the bottom of the iPhone version. Since you know, once you get to that size, you know the format's very different. And that's just a decision that I decided to make. But now you have this sort of flexibility uh, by taking these animations that were originally set up using elements and now sharing them across the different scenes using the symbol feature. So very quickly, let me just show you how that now works with the symbols now added to my project. I only did this for demo purposes for the very last scene. So let me go ahead and scroll down to the last scene and here are my animations coming in. And now I'm going to go ahead and drag my window over, and you'll see how the animations have are adjusted to the various different platforms. So the next one is iPad horizontal, iPad vertical, and iPhone vertical. Pretty cool. This is what the new Hype Professional allows you to do. And I'm just touching the surface, obviously. I mean, Hype really did a fantastic job. The design is beautiful. It is just spectacular. Absolutely love this application. I think you're going to love it too. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of my Apple Podcast. This is Hype by Tumult. Being featured in the App Store. Check it out.